Okay. So last day we were discussing the analysis part uh, that the authors had done and we had already discussed the occupational stereotypes uh, and we have listed some of the most prominent occupational stereotypes that the authors found. OK. So today we will start off with the analogy exhibiting stereotypes. This is already something that I gave you some idea about last day. So basically here the authors do not solve the analogy problem directly, but they find out like all such pairs which are a good analogy given a seed pair. So seed pair say in this case the she he pair okay this is the seed pair and you want to find out all such pairs x comma y such that he to X and she to Y is a good analogy. This is what you want to do. OK. So for this reason, the authors define something called the seed direction. Now, what is the seed direction? This is simply the difference in the vectors of the two seed words. OK, the difference. In the. Seed pair. Fine. So and all these vectors are normalized. Okay, so these are all unit vectors. So all through in all the analysis that we will see, you have to assume that these are all unique vectors. OK, now. Given. A B. Is set to. The she he pair for the experiments, the score of any other pair XY is defined as follows. Cos OK, so this is how. The scoring is defined. Now what does this say? This says the following. So I want two things. So the score should do two things in parallel. One is that the difference of the vectors. Of the vectors should should be close to parallel okay and the second thing is that the Vectors 
x and y should be themselves similar and the similarity is defined by the threshold delta okay so in general this particular criteria actually sets the extent of semantic similarity semantic similarity that you want between the word pair okay so this is the semantic similarity, the extent of semantic similarity that one wants to like have between a pair of words. Okay. Now for their experiments, the authors set delta to one. Okay. Now they get the scores AB for all pairs of words. Okay. The ones at the top what is their hypothesis? For the ones at the top, what is their hypothesis? So you sc score these pairs and you rank them. The ones at the top of the rank list. What is the their hypothesis about these? So they will be the most similar analogous most pairs. Anal most similar analogous pairs. Most similar analogous pairs. One trick that they used in order to reduce redundancy is they discarded all such analogies that had the same x to include variety to include more variety okay the same sorry same Word X, like maybe a little more explicit. You read it as the same word X. OK, so you discard all the different analogies. You take only one. OK, the uh, there could be many different uh, analogies sharing the word X. OK, so you output only one of those multiple outputs. So this is how they constructed the list of analogous pairs. OK, so is this clear? The second part. So you might have multiple analogies actually on the top of the list with the same. X word OK with the same X item. So you take only the top scorer among these. 
the rest you ignore and you go to the next different x okay so in this way you avoid the same word being repeated in the analogies now again these analogies were rated by the amt workers okay so they were asked two yes no questions so many of you are doing data centric uh, btech projects some of you are doing tam projects which require this kind of uh, evaluation so this is a like this is also a very important part of like Uh, any data centric experiment that you do is how you build your ground truth so for instance your ground truth is built from a survey now the design of a survey is itself a very intriguing challenge and you need to take every care that the survey that you are doing has like no biases in it like serves the purpose that you want to uh, actually evaluate the system for and things like that so there are a lot of design questions that are involved in building a survey okay and in fact just like full papers are written in many conferences around like how to build a successful survey okay so so this is this is a part that does not uh, so it's it's not that like since it's not computational you can ignore this if you have to do data science well you have to be a very good design engineer and you have to be like uh, uh, very much uh, like critical about how you design your survey okay so the first thing that they asked is whether the pairs at all make make any sense as an analogy only if the answer to the first question was yes okay then so if this was yes then the second question was asked whether the pair represents a gender stereotype okay so these were the two questions that were asked one followed by the other now every analogy as usual was judged by Ten targets. Okay, and one fifty such analogies were evaluated. Now, out of this seventy two. were rated by five or more workers as gender appropriate that is there is no bias and 29 of them were rated by five or more workers 
as gender stereotypes. Okay, so now let us look at some examples of these analogies and those that were found to be gender appropriate and gender inappropriate. Some of the top gender appropriate analogies were the following. Some of the gendered stereotypes were as follows. Uh, there are many more. So I, I was uh, trying to write some of the most uh, like uh, like uh, strange ones. So uh, and uh, thought of discussing with you like whether you can make uh, some head and tail 
of these, some of these. Okay, now I will ask you one by one. Now, what about this one? Cupcakes versus pizzas. Why do you think that this has featured? Any idea? The highly controversial. Any idea? Do you agree? Okay, some of them are like blatant, blatantly uh, stereotypical. That's fine. But uh, any idea like why why this has come up? Like, I mean, do you do you really agree with this? Okay, how many agrees? You can raise your hands. I can check. Let me see how many agrees. That it is stereotypical or like uh, agree in the sense? Agree in the sense. Uh, so you understand that, uh, right? So um, what is coming out from the data is that uh, uh, she is to cupcakes and he is to pizzas. So my question is, do you agree with this stereotype? I mean, others are blatantly stereotypical. These are some which I find a bit funny. So that's why I'm asking. How many feels that it is she is to cupcakes and he is to pizzas? People are very diplomatic. Nobody is raising hand. What about the other one? Cosmetics versus pharmaceuticals? She is to cosmetics and he is to pharmaceuticals. No one is raising hand. So there are three very uh, like uh, intriguing ones. These two and the other one is giggle and chuckle. So you all of you feel that these are OK. How many of you feel that these are stereotypical? These are not correct. Let me ask you that way. Somebody might be in the middle ground. OK. 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 A lot, lot says that OK, these are these are like stereotypical. That's good to know. OK, so there is there is a general uh, like uh, belief that uh, uh, even though these are like not very like uh, very severe ones, but they too have like this um, um, sense of stereotypicality. That's good to know. At least we now have a vote. OK, so fine. So that is one part of it. Now it seems like that the story doesn't end here. Why? Because there is something else that is hidden in this whole idea of extraction of analogies and that what we call presence of indirect gender bias. Now, what is this? Okay. So these are those types of biases that do not like uh, seem to be very apparent, but uh, like uh, they, they, although they are not very apparent, they seem to influence 
the relative geometry between the neutral words themselves. Okay, so how do we uh, like understand this? Let us try to take an example and explain what we are uh, like. What, what explain the message that is hidden in this? Okay. So in general, so far what we were trying was that, or what whatever we were trying to study was were examples of direct bias. Now what happens in direct bias? This manifests So in the relative similarities, in the relative similarities, between gender specific and gender neutral words. So the way the, these similarities are like uh, um, like similar, the way that these similarities emerge uh, in this kind of a vector space that actually results in the uh, direct biases that we see. But then even without these kind of direct biases in place, there could be biases existing. Now these are like, indirect biases were two gender neutral words. So here there was one gender specific word and another gender neutral word and their relative similarities actually define the direct bias. But there could be a pair of gender neutral words whose geometry can be influenced, okay? Thereby causing indirect biases. One example is the softball football pair. So softball, football, these are both gender neutral examples. Now the problem is that they seem to be like the direction of this softball football, okay, looks to be or seems to be somewhat biased. Okay. And if you look carefully, you will see that the there are certain words that are more close to the softball compared to the football. So, softball, the words that are close to softball are bookkeeper, receptionist, registered nurse, waitress, etc. Whereas on the football extreme, you have words like Footballer, businessman, 
पंडित मेस्ट्रो क्लेरिक एक्सेट्रा ओके सो नाउ व्हाट डज दिस शो what does this show why are these people closer and why are these people closer huh why are this set of words close and why are this set of words close this is apparent right because of their indirect indirect female associations and because of their indirect male associations at least these ones okay the connection of football with at least these words are because of the indirect male associations and for softball with these words are because of all of their indirect female association so you see these words themselves are unrelated but they become related in the vector space or they get closer to each other in the vector space because of all of them being close to the female axis say for example the she vector whereas these guys all of them are close to one another kind of forming a cluster because they are close to the male axis say for example he why did i omit the footballer case why does this argument not hold for footballer football and footballer relation this no relation ha bolo bolo Word football and footballer are like similar to each other anyway, so we can't uh, say if it is because of gender bias or. Yes, so the there are like apart from having male associations, there could be other reasons for football and footballer to be similar. Okay, so these are apart from just. having male associations both these words can be having other legitimate relation okay so similar are cases like astronomy and astronomer
and you can think of many other such cases. Okay. Now we will slowly move toward the. So this part was more of the exploratory analysis that they did. Now we will slowly move on to debiasing. Now, as a first step toward this debiasing, we define something called the gender subspace. Okay, so in in the debiasing, we will have a few things to look into. One is quantifying the gender subspace. The second is quantify the direct bias. based on the definition of gender subspace. Then quantifying the indirect bias based on the definition of gender subspace. And finally, debiasing algorithms. So these are the step by step things that we will get introduced ourselves to now. The first thing is the gender subspace. So as I had already told you that language usage is like very messy because of lot of uh, like semantic uh, complexity, the um, words being used, like having multiple meanings, like um, there is a lot of polysemy, etc. So as we were discussing last day, that the word man would have multiple senses. Like starting from mankind. The male. Human. To very, very like nuanced usages like oh man. Okay. Or man the station. So is a proverbial use. So these are like like a lot of different usages of the same word. So therefore, building a gender subspace is not very easy. So what can be done is to, rather than considering a single word, it is always advisable to use a lot of words or at least a good set of words or good a representative set of words to build the gender subspace. Okay, so gender subspace or the or in uh, like um, more simplistic term, simplistic term, the gender direction. So so far we had taken only the she he direction. Okay as 
the gender direction. Now we want to enrich this further. And we want to pump in well known such gender pairs like she, he, woman, man, gal, guy, etc. Now, question is how to do it in a principled way. This is our question. So in order to do this in a principled way, we will take a few steps. And what will finally result in is what we call the aggregate gender direction. We call or denote it as G in RD. So now this definition of G, once we are able to operationalize the definition of G, you will see that this will help us in further quantifying the direct and indirect biases. Okay, so now for, for doing this, uh, like, or setting this subspace up, uh, we note a few interesting properties of languages. So you can have the relationships like this. So a grandmother can be expressed as Wise gal. Similarly, a grandfather can be represented as a wise guy. Okay, so grandmother minus grandfather. Could be gal minus guy. And this is what is we want to term as G. So since this type of relationships holds in the vector space for languages, we are like able to generate the gender direction like. Uh, so, so, so we are able to uh, generate the gender direction uh, using very simple mathematical steps. Okay, so now here again, like all the time, this might not be a complete equality. Okay, complete equality may not exist simply again because of the polysemy of the words for instance grandfather is sometimes used in the proverbial sense of grandfather regulation okay so there could be uh, such cases of um, irregularity that one can 
find okay so also sometimes like the frequency counts of the different uh, uh, male female entities are limited by the sample size so all this taken together might not lead to a complete equality okay so the authors chose 10 pairs 10 possible gender pairs for the purpose of their experiments okay and they wanted to test the crowd concept of gender using these pairs now what did they do in specific they asked the crowd workers to generate two lists okay two separate lists one list corresponding to the words that they think are gendered by definition and the others list corresponding to the words that they bill believe capture gender stereotypes okay so these are the two word sets that they asked the crowd workers to generate so the first list list 1 are the list of words that the talkers thought are gendered by definition okay for example one pair that the tarker suggested was waitress comma menswear okay this this is a purely gendered pair another list list to okay, where list of words which the talkers thought were gender stereotypes now example could be sewing and football okay now from the tarkers votes okay so they asked the tarkers to generate these two lists and from this list they found out the authors find found out the 50 most fifty most male centric words and fifty most female centric words now note that this 50 most sphere male centric words can have both gendered words and gender stereotypes male similarly these 50 words can have gendered 
words and gender stereotypes. Email. Now from the crowd, they found out the 50 most male centric words and the 50 most female centric words. Now, using the different pairs that they listed, the 10 pairs, she minus he. Okay, this was one direction. Her minus his. Woman minus man. Mary minus John. Herself minus himself. Daughter minus son. Mother minus father. Gal minus gal. Girl minus boy. Female minus male. So these were the 10 words, the X, I, Y, I, that they chose, 10 pairs that they chose. Now, what did they do? Using each of these directions, using each of these uh, gender directions, like she minus he, her minus he, uh, his, woman minus man, each of these, with each of these, they tried to classify the male and the female words, the 100 male and the female words that they obtained from the crowd, okay? And they classified the gendered words and the stereotype words separately. So gendered words, gendered by definition and stereotype. Stereotype. Again, here, gendered stereotype. So they classified the gendered words separately and the stereotype words separately. Okay. So a candidate pair, for example, the she, he is, say, we say that it accurately classifies a crowd suggested female definition, okay? If that word vector is closer to she than to he, that's how the accuracy is measured, okay? Suppose the crowd suggested that the word W is female, okay? Now this could be both by definition or by stereotype. Now we try to see whether the she, he pair is able to classify this word correctly as female. So what does it mean to classify this word correctly as female? The, the vector for this word will be closer in distance to she, than to he, okay? So this distance will be closer. This is further. So this is how you define or you define the accuracy. So if this is true, if the she, he axis is able to classify the female word correctly as female, then we give one point to that axis. Okay, so in this way, we test for all the 100 words that we have 
got annotated or that we have received from the crowd. So on those 100 words, for the definitional words, the definitional words, the accuracy for the he, she axis was 92% and for the stereotype, it was 89%. Okay, you here you classified only the gendered words and here you classified the stereotypes using this particular direction. Similarly, you did it for all the other and some numbers were obtained. All of these were 80 plus. Like expect accepting a very few. As in this one. So the classification accuracy, when you consider the definition words, are in the left-hand side. And when you consider the stereotype words, they are in the right-hand side. So we see for these vectors, these gender uh, directions, like the 10 uh, gender directions that the authors uh, assume, like uh, they are able to classify the crowd-defined uh, male and female words pretty accurately. Okay, so therefore, tomorrow we will see how they collect all these gender directions into a single vector, okay, which they will start calling the gender subspace. So we'll stop here.